high. Uh, we're still buffering as um, it, this is prone to do, but I think that we're live now. Welcome to the 12th Parenting in a Pandemic. Uh, today, I want to talk to um, parents who, for one reason or another, uh, may not have access to their children at the moment. Uh, that might be because uh, you're shielding. It might be because uh, you're a key worker. It could be because uh, you don't live with your children and due to either one household or the other having um, you know, protected or shielding people in uh, that you can't uh, have access to them. It could be that you didn't have access anyway. And uh, so uh, that's just an ongoing situation, but obviously it's a lot more tense during the COVID situation. The information that uh, I'm going to give you today is based on uh, information that you can access from Care for the Family and their COVID, COVID particular section on their website. Uh, I always point to that because it's always worth looking at. Uh, Care for the Family is a, an excellent organisation. Uh, and uh, I also am taking some information from the dads workshops that we run. Um, and sometimes uh, dads who come to us have no access to their children or limited access to their children uh, and they're seeking to uh, improve that situation. Uh, so uh, I would also say that Care for the Family have facilitators who run these courses and workshops all over the country. And if you check on their website, you might see some places that are currently doing an online course that's um, applicable to you. Or you may be able to look once the uh, lockdown is over for a course you can attend. They're always willing to help you. So if you've got particular requests, uh, do get in touch with them. We do run the courses at Salway ourselves. And so if you would like us to do a course that is particular to your circumstances when we are able, then uh, do get in touch with us through our Facebook page or our website, and uh, we will be able to um, speak to you about your particular needs. Uh, we aim to help people who live in and around our particular area of Woodford Green. Um, so if that's you, uh, we would love to be in touch with you. So today, uh, talking about uh, people who uh, are not currently able to meet with their children. I'm dividing this into two parts. One is where you do have contact with your children, and the other is when you have no current contact with your children. And uh, I will just put a little... A uh, bit on the end about uh, communicating with people who are sometimes, uh, you know, we find we struggle to to sort of remain civil with. That's often people that we're co-parenting with or are aiming to uh, become again co-parents with, and uh, just establishing good relationships. Some little tips about that. So if you are shielding or someone in the household um, that you're in or your child is in a shielding, or if you're a key worker and are not currently um, living with your child to protect your family, uh, this is really hard. It might be a separation that you're not used to because normally you would live with them, uh, but because of your job, you're not. What can you do to maintain that relationship with your child? Well, I'm sure that you're doing some of this sort of screen time with your children, and that's really important. It's not the same, uh, but uh, it, it's the best that we can manage. But what else can we do to support them? You might want to have a picture that uh, you give to your child that is of you, that they can put by their bed at night. Uh, and so they can remember you, or it may be somewhere else, maybe on the meal table, so that when they sit and have their meal, they kind of have a, a presence of you with them. And it could be that you um, swap 
that that you ask them to send you a photograph that you can have by your bed uh, or on your meal table so that you have a commonality of that presence it's not an actual presence but it's a presence either at bedtime or at the meal time of one another and show and share that with one another on screen time show them that it's there there are other things that you can do that perhaps you can make something for them and they make the same for you there is uh, an idea at the moment of making um, painted stones for somebody you make one for them and they make one for you and you are able to exchange them it need not be a stone it could be a heart just a paper heart it could be a, a written card it could be you know absolutely anything um, maybe something that your child is particularly interested in and you exchange them and you keep them in a special place you may want to do just a screenshot of yourselves on the screen together and uh, both have that picture printed off but the idea is that you have that you both have the same so you have a connection things that we miss when we're not able to be with someone and actually hug them is a multi-sensory experience isn't it so we miss how people smell we miss how people feel when we hug them uh, we miss um, obviously uh, seeing them so think about something that you can give to your child that is more than just a picture as well uh, something that smells of, of you something that they can cuddle that is a particular reminder so for example it might be the pillow off your bed at home or a, perhaps a cushion that you have on your bed at home particularly if it is perhaps um, sprayed with your perfume so they can they can have that sense of smelling you and snuggling into you um, that would really help them so think about the five senses and just think about how you can um, trigger those connections through that if there is a favorite thing that perhaps you have once a week as a family for a meal that you can uh, when you screen time that you can have that thing together whether it's pizza on friday or um, a particular dessert that's your favorite that you make sure that both of you have it so that you have that connection through um, again through a sense uh, uh, and something you're doing together not just looking at each other and trying to communicate verbally so think about all those um, other sensory and non-verbal ways of communicating. You might also feel that the conversation is difficult to keep going when you are talking to your children because obviously you don't want to um, give them news about your, your job. If it's a key working job and it's full of worries and concerns, you want to hear about them. But it's good to give them a window onto your life uh, in, in some positive ways. So it's good also to let them know that you're remembering them uh, at particular times. It's not just when I speak to you, but you're in my thoughts all the time. So uh, bring things into the conversation. Like uh, when I go past the park, I always think of you uh, because the, you love that more than anything. We always go to the park together. Uh, and under normal circumstances and your favorite thing is the swings and i remember that or i when i drive past the forest on my way to work i remember that lovely day we had that picnic and you can have then a conversation about happy memories and times together uh, and that's a, a great thing to relive together because it triggers not just it's not just hearing what you say and looking at you but it's reliving something the fun the jokes do you remember what happened um do you remember what we ate in that picnic <laughs> do you remember that silly game we played um it may not just be things outside the house it may be um when i go into the bathroom i remember that crazy day we had that bubble fight when you were staying at my place or um you know when i sit on the sofa i always think of how we cuddle up together when you're here with me 
So lots of sort of ordinary everyday memories. Bring that life that you have enjoyed in the past and you will enjoy again in the future into the conversation so that you're living togetherness and remembering what it's like. And also, uh, it's good to sort of say we might feel hopeless, but it's good to give them that hope that I, I, I'm really looking forward to the time when you can come round again, when we can go and have another picnic, when, you know, these happy times return. Give them hope that you believe it's going to come back. That's probably really good for them. If your children are a bit smaller than that and it's hard to sort of have those conversations, you might want to show them places uh, around the house uh, uh, as you talk, not just talk like I am in one place, uh, just a talking head, but walk around the house and show them the different places, uh, show them the garden, show them the, the memories, if you like. But also think of uh, having rhymes and um, little words and actions that you can say together and repeat in every conversation. They're often things that bring bonding, aren't they? These sort of repeated routines and habits for a small child. It could be that you always read their favourite story, but if you think of uh, something like the Teletubbies or um, in the night garden, there's a lot of repetition and a lot of sameness of words in every episode. And that's important to small children. So when you're having your conversation, have words and rhymes and actions and jokes and stories and fun that you can repeat because that's part of what they can look forward to next time, as well as having some elements of difference, perhaps one or two things that you can do differently, say differently and, um, you know, and express how much you want to see them again. Uh, another thing you can do is to, uh, if you've got a cooperative co-parent where your children are, to um, send things that are for a particular day. So uh, not necessarily big celebrations like birthdays, or a particular time of the day. So you might um, want to send a note or something that might be in their packed lunch on Fridays or, you know, wishing you a lovely weekend or by their bed at the end of the day. Sometimes not the same note, maybe a different note or picture. Um, so things that are just, I, I'm thinking of you today. Uh, and if you have a cooperative co-parent, that's a great thing to be able to do. It could be that you're away working or not able to return and otherwise you would be there. Uh, and that's great fun to get creative over little, um, you know, favorite things that they like. If it's a Barbie girl or a yeah, frozen picture or something with uh, a little note from you saying, um, thinking of you today or wishing you a good night whatever it is. So uh, things that are special for a particular day or particular time of day. When you're talking uh, to your children, uh, three do's and a don't for this, um, for these parents who have contact with their children. Do, uh, don't just pretend that you are not having um, negative feelings, sad feelings, um, name your feelings um, say i miss you um i felt sad when i couldn't be with you today uh, i'm disappointed that i still can't come and see you um whatever it is uh, name your sad feelings because it is a good role model to acknowledge all feelings and it's a bad role model to uh, be someone who pushes down negative feelings and doesn't acknowledge them. We're teaching our children to bottle feelings, to not acknowledge them, and that gives them problems in the future. So do be a good role model in verbalising, naming your feelings. I know I say that a lot. 
Perhaps you might want to say what it is that you are missing or you are looking forward to. And do speak positively about the future. We've said that already. One really important don't is um, don't say anything negative about the person who is the parents or the carer there with them. Not because um, that, well, there are lots of reasons might not, I might not say that, but um, one really important thing is it undermines your child's security. That is their main adult there who is taking care of them. You want your child to be secure and you want to support their well-being. So you must always, uh, as far as they're concerned, as far as you're able, to back up and support and say positive things about the parent who is there caring for them. It's not easy to care for a child on their own, on your own, and they're doing their best. And their interest is the child's well-being. So, um, so you know, try really hard to not say negative things about the person who is there caring for them. So let's think about people who have no contact with their children. This could be imposed by COVID. It might have already been an ongoing situation. Or for some people, it might have happened because during COVID, uh, family life has become uh, less predictable and you are now uh, not able to see them. Whereas at the beginning of lockdown, you were able to see them. So all the things that I've just said about um, sharing your emotions and being able to send little keepsakes and knickknacks and messages won't apply to you uh, in the same way. But of course, I would expect you're working towards a time when you can be with your child again, when you can spend time with them. And so one thing I would say to you is to um, continue to mark days and the times. Um, if you are thinking of your child, you might want to just write that down in a note or a card as if they could receive it, but then tuck it away somewhere for the time when they can. Remember, if they have a birthday, to buy them a card, to uh, buy them a present and wrap it because although they can't um, open that now, the time when you are reunited, you'll be able to say, look, I thought of you on your birthday and I bought this for you and I've kept it for you to unwrap now. Even if um, you have, uh, some people sometimes have, and I hope you don't, a backlog or two or three or more gifts, birthday, Christmas, and other special treats. Um, it's, it means such a lot to children to know that although you weren't able to have contact, you thought about them in really deep, meaningful and personal ways, and you never stopped caring for them. So, uh, so do um, continue to mark birthdays and other special occasions in that way. And by extension, another good thing is to uh, keep a scrapbook or a memory box of maybe special times that you would want to share with your children, your own thoughts and feelings as time passes. And so maybe Father's Day is coming up. And if you're a dad who doesn't currently have access to your children, you may want to record your thoughts and feelings uh, on Father's Day. At and uh, just put that in your memory box. Uh, obviously do it in a way that's appropriate for your children to read. So the things that you're missing about having contact with them on Father's Day. Um, so that when you are able to share that, they know how much they mean to you and how deeply you love them. But there's also keepsakes you can put in there. Um, there are uh, other things you might want to share. So um, this is a picture of me the day I got my uh, new car. 
and uh, I've taken a picture of it today because the first thing I wanted to do was to come around and take you out for a spin in my new car and I'm looking forward to the day that I can pop it in your memory box pop, pop it in your scrapbook I'm just going to stop my clock because it does ding and it's going to ding but quite soon <laughs> I'm just going to stop that uh, so it doesn't interrupt us so uh yeah so make a, a memory box or a scrapbook of your thoughts your feelings your special events um and all this your life that you want to share with your child so that they can share it when it's possible now Dealing with, uh, I want to just move on to the last thing, which is dealing with um, difficult relationships between adults who co-parent. Often these can get heated and they happen at the time when your child is there at handover time. And um, yeah, it, it's not good because it's not how you want to start or end your time with your child. It's not helping their well-being and their security to see that the their two parents are in conflict um it's it's really storing up um difficulty for them and sometimes difficulty that they can't express they can't express to you or their other parent so one really good tip is to have a positive self talk to rationalize quietly to yourself in your own mind that um, this is a difficult time, we're often anxious or angry or frustrated and it builds up in that anxious part of our mind. So we need to overrule that with rational thought that comes further towards the front of our head. So we need to consciously say, right, I'm going to keep cool now. And as the conversation starts, just say, I am keeping cool. It, Try and put yourself in their shoes and try and put yourself in your own shoes. Uh, I can't um, think how difficult it is to hand over to somebody that I'm in conflict with. Uh, that must be very difficult. Um, so you're sort of empathising, deliberately empathise with the other party. Um, also empathise with your child. Uh, I want to make this the best situation from the very beginning when uh, as the handover is happening to the very end to the handover back is completed be for the sake of my child. You might want to ask yourself a question. What is it that triggers a feeling of anger or frustration or despondency when I am talking to this person and just acknowledge to yourself what that is? Um, because if you can analyse that, then you, you can kind of manage your response to those triggers that trigger certain emotions in you. And then actually starting with somebody. Um, this is a hack that my sister gave me who, who uh, in part of her life, trains people like receptionists to ha handle difficult customers. So when somebody is... Um, talking to you sometimes they're agitated or frustrated or irritated or cross so you either start with fact or feeling it doesn't matter which way you start um, but um, first of all you can acknowledge um, so you're saying you don't want me to bring her home late today because granddad is calling for whatever reason so first of all Without giving any emotional language, repeat back the facts. The other person then knows you have listened. That takes angry wind out of sails. Then the next thing you can say is, is show that you've acknowledged their feelings. I, I can see you feel anxious about this. Um, and then calmly suggest what you can do about it so um okay i was planning to take them to so and so today uh that the, the traffic on the way home may be difficult so um i'll do 
you know, I'll take them to such and such else, or I'm, I'll maybe set off 10 minutes early just to be sure. And then if we get back in 10 minutes early, is it okay if we just carry on chatting in the car until our time is up? So, um, so acknowledge their, what they're saying with calm, factual language. Acknowledge their emotion, name their emotion, which is what I always talk about, but that takes kind of anger out of situations or agitation or frustration or whatever it is. Uh, it, it kind of um, takes that down a notch. And then find a way to um, have your time without causing conflict. Don't say, well, well I've, this is my only two hours a week. I'm going to take it. I've planned this. Yes, make sure you have the two hours. But if you spend the last 10 minutes in the car outside just talking about memories or the great time you've had, that's also okay. Um, so find ways of calming it down. And I would say as well, for um, the for the betterment of your relationship, the better your relationship with your co-partner, the more secure your child is, the better the well-being, and that's what you're aiming at. So you may not be able to take your child out at the moment, but you need to always have these thoughts in mind of having that calm, cooperative relationship that will smooth out um, the situation so that you can start having that again. So whatever dealings you're having with the other parent, um, always make sure that you do that smoothing out to enable you to start having the, that relationship again where you can take your child out. And um, lastly, I'm just trying to read my last notes, which I've scrawled here. You might be anxious about um, how your co-parent uh, situation has changed. For example, do they have a new partner? Um, and you might be thinking, or for example, do, do their parents now have a much greater influence than you do? Perhaps you're worried about that. But the more you can cooperate with your co-parents, the more than you can be calm and cool and collected in your dealings with them. Don't rise to emotional bait. Be factual. Um, be cooperatively resolving whilst not compromising your situation. The more you're going to be able to have access to your child, the more you're going to be able to be the parents that you want to be, have that influence of um you know the maximum influence and not allow other adults in the situation that you fear will usurp your position to actually do so i hope i'm making sense <laughs> so that's just a few pointers to people who are not able to um currently have full access to their children or perhaps not have any access to their children uh do let me know uh how that you find that if that's helpful and i'll be back next wednesday with another uh, parenting in a pandemic but until then uh, i wish you a very good afternoon <laughs>